Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Hey, if you're like me, you spend a ton of time over months and months cultivating your trees and your garden so that way you can come out and enjoy the fruit of your labor. And then you get your basket ready, you come out, and you find that your harvest has been decimated by birds. Ah! <laughs> In this video, I'm gonna talk through the kinds of issues that we've had with birds. I'm gonna show you how to build what I'm calling a bird bozo. <laughs> and if you stay tuned to the end, I'm gonna tell you some other options that might work for you as well. Let's get busy. okay with birds eating some of my stuff once in a while, nibble here, nibble there. But the most sad bird experience that I've had is definitely these cherries this year where they wiped out at least 90% of the cherries. Absolutely broke my heart. Hey, before the video goes on any further, why don't you tell me your worst experience with bird damage or whatever it is to your trees? I'd love to hear about it so we can commiserate together. We love birds. Birds are amazing. We've got a lot of birds in the area, little songbirds I always hear even in the background now can hear them. And we have some birds that come into our yard. We've seen robins and blue jays and sparrows and finches and hawks and all sorts of types of birds. But all that to say, birds do create a lot of pest pressure on our trees. Trees often will have a nice heavy fruit load like this Arctic star nectarine. And we had the same kind of thing going on with our, our three-in-one cherry planting with our mini royal and royal lee. And royal crimson is brand new as another pollinator has it, is gonna grow this year. Loaded with fruit, we were so excited, we came out here only to find when we were ready to pick that all of the cherries had been decimated. 90% of them gone. Birds came and ate them, and I thought this means war. Now, I don't actually wanna kill any of the birds. I just want them to go find some other place to play. <laughs> so we've tried some things in the past. This isn't the first time we've dealt with birds. Some things we've tried in the past are like a bird netting, which goes over the top of a tree. The reason I didn't like that is when it's draped on here, even though it was protecting the fruit from birds getting in, it was causing all of these young, young new tender growth to just grow really weird and distorted. So I didn't like that. Another thing that we tried was this bird tape. It's kind of a, a reflective tape I'm gonna show you in a little bit that as it wiggles in the wind, it reflects and kind of makes the birds feel uncertain. And so you just tie it to the little tree branch and hope that it wiggles. The problem is, is it was getting wrapped up in the tree and stopped being effective, it stopped moving. Another one that you hear really commonly done is by using old CDs, you know, compact discs, you know those things? <laughs> Well, they're reflective on one side and so that you tie it to the tree and it would wiggle around in the wind and the reflection would make birds feel uncertain. But what we found is that when we tried that as well, it would just get wrapped up in the tree and would stop being effective. So I set out to find something and make something that would deter birds in an effective way. I had a few criteria about it. One, I wanted it to be easy. Second, I wanted it to be portable. I don't wanna to have to build some sort of custom thing for each tree. I want something that could be easily deployed when a fruit is about to, to be you know, ripened and ready to harvest. I wanna just put this thing out here and have it do its job. And third, I want this thing to be effective. Okay, in order to be effective, I think that this thing needs to play to a bird's weakness. Now, it's interesting, their weakness actually flows from one of their strengths. Birds have an amazing sense of eyesight, where dogs have a, an amazing sense of smell. Birds have an amazing sense of eyesight and ability to see things. And they rely on having a keen, uh, keen eyesight in order to fly safely. They also use that eyesight to spot food. And importantly for our purposes, they also use their eyesight to avoid predators. So what we're trying to do is to create a situation where a bird is repelled or stays away because they feel uncertain about what they see. They don't know if this thing is gonna cause some sort of issue for them as a predator or not. Now, there are a couple of things that are gonna play into that that we're gonna to try to capitalize on. One is movement. Birds, they when things are moving and look like they might be alive, birds will steer clear of them. Unlike using something like a scarecrow or those you know, bird decoys, those like owls or hawks or whatever it is. How many pictures have you seen of, of those owls just covered with bird poop because birds have learned that they could just roost on the top of them and perch up there. <laughs> so movement and something that is 
makes them feel uncertain, like it might jump out at them at any time, is something that we want to do to create uncertainty. Another thing we want to do is create something that is reflective. So as something moves in the wind and as the light catches it and goes into the bird's eyes, it looks like a sudden movement and the bird wants to steer clear of it because it seems very unpredictable and they don't know what's going on, so they avoid this stuff. And our bozo is going to be made up of three primary deterrent features. The first of which is going to be this bird tape that's reflective. Do you see how that just catches the, the light and as it wiggles in the wind? It uh, just creates these little shimmering effects all over the place. Another is going to be these shimmery owls. So as this wiggles around in the, in the wind and they see these scary predator eyes, they hopefully will stay away. Um, another feature of this are going to be these hanging kind of wind chimes that are going to make the birds hear some stuff and hopefully stay away because of the unpredictability of that. And finally, what I'm really excited to try out is the scare eye. And what this is, is it's a balloon that has an eye on every side of it. Regardless of which direction it's facing, the bird always thinks that this thing is looking at it. And I'm gonna put bird tape, and I'm gonna create three bozos, so that way I can have them all the way around the tree. Three stooges. Constructing the frames of these bozos is gonna be pretty easy. This was from an old frame that I had. I don't have to be exactly precise with this. We're just trying to figure something that about waist height and about head height ought to work in creating our little bozo frame. Taking this and figuring out roughly where head height or so is gonna be, probably around here. And an easier thing to use than a hacksaw is one of those PVC cutting things, but I don't know where mine is right now, so hacksaw it is. All right, so that's gonna give us our vertical height. And then what we wanna do is to fashion a couple of arms that are gonna go out here and ideally flap in the wind a little bit. And so cutting the rest of this in half probably ought to do it. Okay, let's grab one of my tees. So this tee is gonna sit here. What I did was take the 10 foot length of PVC. I was able to cut down a couple of pieces to make about six and a half, seven feet tall. Um, I then took some of the remaining parts and cut these smaller little arms out of it. So what we did was we put a tee in the middle so that way we can hang something at about waist height. And then I'm putting a tee at the top with these two two smaller pieces and that'll help distribute the weight so it's not creating such bend. It's kind of distributing it on either side and creating a little bit of balance. And this is our structure. This is the main structure of our bozo. So we're gonna have some area and ability to hang some things on either side of this and also down here. Now we get to decide what we wanna put and where. I would recommend putting the heavier items in more toward the middle because the further out they are, the more bend this is gonna to wanna to have. Whereas here it's gonna be a little bit it's gonna be a little more neutral. So we want it to move, we don't want it to tip over or break in half. Um, and this can be oriented really any direction you want. So that way you have one going this way, one going this way, one going this way, creating some bit of coverage. So this is the basic frame of our bozo. And so now I'm gonna go decide what I wanna to attach to this and how. Let's go back to that bench. Okay, so we've got our three options here. We, oh, cool. <laughs> it's got these little reflective eyes to stick on. Look at how cool this is. Look, an eye at every turn. Let me blow this thing up. Oh, this is taking longer. Why is this so difficult? Whew, I'm getting lightheaded. Only about halfway there. I'm taking a breather here. <laughs> In the heat, you know, the blowing out, I'm gonna not faint here. Oh, but he did faint. Okay, with these scary eyes, they say, they say to not inflate it all the way because if you do, as the light and heat hits on it, it's gonna expand and can create some bursting in the seams. And so this is inflated. <laughs> this is cool, isn't it? Now, something I didn't originally notice is inside the containers, they do have these little reflective eyes that'll go right in the middle but they also gave some of this red uh, reflective tape that's gonna hang from the bottom of this. And so that's gonna give even some additional motion bonus. Okay, so we're gonna put these reflective eyes on this owl, owl face. Look how reflective and shiny and freaky that is. That's gonna scare those birds. Scary. Okay, finally done with this thing. 
think there's going to be room for just one of these on one side with nothing else on it because of how big that is. Look at that. That's, that's fine though. That'll be good as it rotates in the wind. A little pro tip with this bird tape is that the bird tape itself is really, really thin, which is great because that means that the wind can catch it and it can be super responsive. But what that's is not good about that is that how do you actually attach it? So something that I like to do is to, with my bird tape, I take a piece of duct tape, three or four inches long, and at one end of it, flip it over like that. So that way when I cut a hole in here, it's going through something that's more reinforced than just this very, very thin flimsy bird tape. So this will allow it to actually hang on a lot longer than if you went straight through the bird tape. Oh, this is awesome. So to create even more motion, it came with these little spinning deals. What do you call these? Almost like wind chimes. These are gonna create some motion as well. Look how freaky that's gonna be. I was originally gonna drill holes through this in specific areas to run string through, but what I think I'm just gonna do is secure these things with zip ties. So if I have a little bit of string, I'll just run the string over the top like this, depending on whichever one it is, and then I'll just similarly run the zip tie through and just zip tie it down. That way it's gonna give me more flexibility over time. Okay, so not having to drill holes is gonna be a good thing. If I can just come out here and see what it looks like on the actual on the actual unit without having to take it on and off every minute. What do you think, something like this? What do you think, put an owl here, zip tie this down. Nice thing about zip tying it is you can still move it back and forth without too much trouble. So I'm trying to move this little scare eye so that it is close to the center as possible but still has room to rotate. So what do you think of this? And do you see how it's slowly kind of flapping and moving in the wind? This is creating some additional motion that hopefully will freak out a bird. I wish I could see, I wish I could ask these birds what they're thinking. I would, but they're bird brains. <laughs> Okay, I think I can say it. Bozo number one is officially completed. This would go a long way in scaring things away. I'm gonna make three of these. We'll call them the Three Stooges. <laughs> three Bozos. Let's go see how this would be deployed at that cherry tree that got blown out and see what it would have looked like had it been there. Ah! Actually, really good point. What I intend to do with this is to use these cinder blocks to weigh each of the legs down so when it's go if it leans forward, it's not gonna go anywhere because it's braced, and then if it leans back, those cinder blocks will keep it from tipping back. Look at that, if this had been here, the birds would have had to almost go through this in order to get over to those cherries. And this is gonna be great, this is just one, I'm gonna have three. So imagine putting one here, one over there, and one over behind it, so that we were splitting this up into three parts. I believe that this is gonna go a long way in protecting these trees from the birds that have been getting them. Nice thing is we come through, we can harvest our cherries, and then we can just pick this up and move it on to the next tree or trees that are ready to be harvested. I'm pretty happy. Not bad, Bozo, not bad. Okay, now that Bozo number one is built, I wanna share with you a few other options that might be available to you besides doing something like this. Some of them I've already mentioned, things like hanging a CD from a tree, using this kind of bird tape, putting netting over your tree or some options. Some other things that people recommend is like putting one of those decoy birds. I don't think that those generally will work because they're stationary, but you can try that. You might have success based on the birds in your area. Some others are using just an old fashioned scarecrow and see if that does the trick. Um, some others include pricier options like an ultrasonic bird repellent. And so what that does is it emits a high-pitched sound that is imperceptible to the human ear, but will drive birds away. They say you've got to change your frequencies in order to make that work, so it may or may not work for you. Another thing they say to consider doing is to feed the birds. Well, I wouldn't do that, because what you're doing is you're artificially increasing the carrying capacity of your area, so that way more birds are able to survive based on you feeding them, and that's just going to increase the number of birds, not drive them away. So. Maybe help in the short term, long term, probably not a good solution. And then uh, finally, they've got these like liquid bird repellents that I guess put off some sort of odor that the birds don't like and it repels them. There may even be some other ones that I didn't include there. All of the options that I mentioned to you are gonna probably work on some birds and not others. Your birds might be smarter than the birds in this area, or maybe my birds are super genius birds and that's why they keep eating all my stuff. 
Anyway, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Busy Gardener channel. We're hopefully giving you some ideas on how you can keep pests and birds out of your orchard and garden so that you don't have to cry when you're about to go out and harvest. All that you end up harvesting is a bunch of your own tears. You don't need to do it. Anyway, whether you're building one contraption to keep birds away in your orchard or garden or 500, till next time, stay busy.